okay because I want to show you all right so I'm gonna notice how I just clicked on it to make it different color like that and I didn't highlight it I just clicked on it so it becomes uh, active and I'm gonna run only that single test case and the reason I can do that is because I have this this special connotation here which says that this is a testable method okay and it allows me to run a single one so once I clicked on it and it, in the clips it gives it this this kind of grayish uh, thing around it I can right click on this guy and they then say run as JUnit and it's going to run just that single test case so when I look at it right it's gonna show me that it failed right I have a failure and it's gonna show me that it failed with this message so let me move it over so you can see it better and it's gonna say that an assertion error was caught and the message is code exception, but it is not illegal argument exception as expected. And it threw it on line 57 of my code. So if I go back and look at line 57, well, this is where it caught it, right? So it caught a situation where the original code that I'm testing is throwing exception, but it's not throwing correct one. Okay. All right. So then the next uh, method we have here, well, so we tested the first, um, we tested the first statement here, line 32, right, our first if loop, and now we want to test this guy, right? So to do that, we have to give it a string value, right? The parameter has to get a value that is either empty string on a null and right and then it's supposed to throw the section second uh, exception so my net method name is test second constructor attribute str null right null value and i'm giving it null expecting it throw an exception and the code is identical right um, i have a file statement with meaningful message when it didn't throw exception i'm catching the exception i expect and I'm checking the message that the exception is supposed to have. And lastly, I have the, um, the catch all, right, for the exception so that if through exception but not the correct one, that it's going to give me this message to help me in debugging what the problem is. So let's run this guy. Run as JUnit. Okay, so hey, it failed again. So how did it fail? Well, it failed the comparison failure because it expected <coughs> meter cannot be null or empty string, but this is what it got, right? So on line 71, so let, let's look at line 71. On 71, what were we checking? Well, we were checking that the message, right, is correct. That the message, that the exception message that is checking, it's supposed to say second parameter could not be null or empty string. But that's not what we got, right? It's missing stuff. So if we look at the code, we can look at, ah, yeah, that's true. Second parameter cannot be null, right? That's what the message is actually being thrown with and it's missing this part of the message right so we found another defect but this time the defect is in the message exception message itself as opposed to before right it was throwing the different exception than we expected right that's why you always check both you check the exception and you check that the message is correct Okay, actually three things. First you check that there is exception in the first place. Then you check that the exception is correct. And then the third thing you check is that the exception message is correct, right? So always those three. And the last test case we have for uh, statement code coverage, because we're just doing statement code coverage, 100% lines of code in this code coverage, um, is our last method. And remember, we only need one single test case for the um, method in order to test every line of code, right? Because all we have to do is make sure that it goes inside of the while loop and executes. So we create a object, right? We make 
the uh, the first parameter for the second one v, right? So what would you expect for the uh, method to do? Well, you expect it to have four v's with spaces between them, right? So we call the method. We save the result, the string that it's supposed to return, and then we check that the method did exactly what we expected. It has a fee v with spaces between them, right? And we're comparing it. So it's testing line 61, 62, 63, right? And when we run it, it have passed, right? We have passed because that's exactly what the code did. All right, so that is the um, code coverage using statement coverage. And let's run all of this just so you see. So I right click on the whole file, <clears throat> JUnit test. And you can see that it ran all the test cases, all seven of them. <clears throat> and it failed, right, for the three test, well, two test cases we talked about, right? So it, it failed because it didn't throw the correct exception for a second constructor, and then it failed because it didn't have correct message for a second parameter. Okay? All right, I will see you in the data coverage.